I'm just sad that we haven't started the series like a podcast. Yeah. We started it more of a role play, then it evolved into a podcast. Yeah, it's, it's definitely changed since the beginning. <laughs> I, will, I will be down with that, yeah. But that's, that's not the end of the world. Uh, we we no. can live with that. P- P- people will be like, I'm a little confused by the first episodes, but after that it was good. Captain's Log, Starlight 192.168.1.12. I am joined by my science officer, Zed Tech. Hello, how are you doing? Good morning, Captain. <laughs> and I have it's... received some frightful, frightful news from my cousin, all the way off in the Palamo Galactic Cluster out in the halo of the uh, the Milky Way, which I, I assume this planet is in. I, I don't think we managed to crash ourselves off into another galaxy. Uh, who knows what could have happened, though. This terrible news is all to do... Well, let, let's let's actually wander over this way before I talk about my terrible news, because we are, we are expanding our science. We are expanding our science. We, we've got ourselves some bullets, and I am told that these bullets will actually lead to science if we mix them with a couple of other things. It's crazy how these things work. <laughs> Apparently grenades and gun turrets. Yeah. Grenades, gun turrets, and bullets somehow give us scientific knowledge. Well, actually, no, I think I can understand how. We, we do testings with the different explosive types to... Uh, to come up with a, uh, a better formulation for even better explosives. Must be. Must be. <laughs> Probably. But yes, well, whilst we're working, my cousin, my, my poor cousin Othello, he, he lives out in a, in a galaxy cluster, and he actually joined one of these, um, you, you might have heard them, they're called Afterlife Communities. Uh, they're all about um, forming together as a community uh, so that your descendants will watch over the server space that you upload your brain to. It's nice and simple. If you ask me, it's a good way of continuing uh, your consciousness into forever. I do have a great niece who tells me he was never the same since he uploaded, but I didn't know him before then, so he's just the, my same uncle or fellow, uh, so he seems good. But he, he had, had a bit of trouble. As these communities are, that there's only so many people but there's actually quite a bit of work to go around. And as you can imagine, every every generation of people getting uploaded to the servers put extra strain on the people that were there. Eventually, it all collapsed. They had to ask for outside help. And uh, as these things are want to do, the commu- uh, not the communists, sorry, the capitalists swoop in and bought up the servers. And now my great uncle Othello is facing a situation where he is going to die if he can't provide resource to keep his server running. Which I think is just absolutely outrageous. I'm not sure if you've heard of these stories before. Interesting. Quite interesting, actually. Yeah, it's uh, a very interesting scenario to find yourself in. Now, like This sort of thing happens uh, all the time uh, back on Earth, uh, where people have uploaded themselves, but they, they have entered into uh, capitalist uh, contracts, if you will, with the people that are running the server anyway. So they, they are aware from the word go that they are supposed to pay for these things up front, which, which does open the interesting dilemma of how does someone pay for that but that, that's not that's not quite the, the, the situation i'm talking about right now though i do want to talk about that what what should my cousin do because obviously his life is being threatened now there are two possible solutions to this indeed indeed put the server on a probe and shoot it out in space yeah but there's still things like maintenance and um like power considerations can be done with in space because obviously you can uh solar power it up no problems you know you just have space space is not limited in space it's kind of why it's called that uh in fact i don't know why it's called that but anyway let's go with that so you can have like kilometer square solar panels that's the word i was looking for i was like what is this thing i'm looking for here uh solar panels and no one would really care uh, so power is not the issue, but still, there things things go wrong on electronics when exposed to galactic radiation for a long time. Uh, so people do need to care for this solar probe. And uh, what was your second option? Slowing down the processing. Oh, it's, get- it's no longer real time processing. It's just processing on a slower level, so using less power and less processing power for an individual human. That that is quite the quite the thought process there, and and it would actually get you a longer lifespan, if you will. Now it might not be such high quality of a lifespan. Uh, there's definitely you uh, wouldn't know. Uh, you would only see the passage of time. Uh, well, the problem is you need to remove the access to the outside world. Then 
No. You can you can no longer interact with the rest of the world. Oh. You live in the simulation forever unless you get a grant or uh, your relatives pay for a visit. Yeah. Where your processing power be returns to normal speed and you can interact for a limited time, of course. Now, my cousin, he's been offered uh, a very a very interesting uh, contract, shall we say. He was visited by the, the great AI of the 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 capitalist company that bought out i really i really should have done some more research and found out what the company name was uh but the the, the great ai visited him and was like hey remember back when you were human and you slept for eight hours a day well your programming contains a lot of very 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 sophisticated uh subroutines from uh pattern recognition to tactical simulation and uh, analysis and stuff like that and we would like to break apart your subroutines and use them for eight hours a day for our analysis that we need to uh, to do and my, my cousin's feeling a little bit funny about that because they've told him it will be like dreaming, but I, he doesn't really want to remember the things they're going to make him analyse. It seems a little little weird. I'm not sure how my cousin should respond to this one because, uh, I, like, I, at the same... It's kind of a situation where you don't know what they're going to feed into you. Oh, wait, we didn't put red belts on this side. We put them on this side. Lol. Uh, you don't know what they're <laughs> going to feed into you. So they could be fixing, like, all sorts of uh, horrific data through your subroutines, like uh, how to calculate war trajectories or the, uh, the cost of a human life or stuff like that. Things that you don't really want to be, I'm going to put it in big inverted commas, dreaming about. But at the same time, you don't want to stop either. So uh, I, I, find, I find that quite a hard situation to deal with. If that's the problem, if they're gonna buy out the owner of the server has all of the say in it, not not the residents. If you go to a different country or a different uh, city mm -hmm. and you get a flat, the owner has the right to basically remove you from the flat at any moment. He does, yes. Of course, at the notice. Yeah, with course. with appropriate notice and and times. So yeah, what whatever the the legal framework is of your time, it is essentially he can kick you out when he wants. Now, is it up to the government to take care of its citizens that are digital? Mm, well, that that as we all know will come down to how many taxes they pay. Yeah, but so what taxes should they pay? First question, because they don't need a lot of the necessities. necessities. They don't need a lot of necessities, but they do need things like their power and uh, maybe like floor space might be something. Now, obviously, uh, the reason my cousin got hold of me because he was like, hey, can you lend me some money? And obviously we live in the glorious future where we have no money. So I was like, I'm sorry, my thoughts and prayers are with you, but I can't do anything. He was asking you for money, but you live in a future that doesn't have any money. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that 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 that's the thing. Like, we we don't live in a uh, a single civilization society. Like, even back when our species lived on one planet, uh, we did not have a homogenous society. There there were many many different uh, forms of even just things like law. You know, there there were many different interpretations of even the same same words uh so nowadays we also live in such a society but spread over the galactic plane oh <laughs> you just placed it <laughs> you just placed a pole right in the right, path. Right, i do that a lot if there's no, something you're trying to do i will interrupt <laughs> So yeah, all in all, I feel pretty bad for my cousin. He thought he had his entire life sorted. Well, his entire afterlife. From now until the heat death of the universe, all planned out. In fact, he was pretty pretty much looking forward to the heat death. That's when his processing power would get maximum maximum returns. Obviously, with the, uh, the lower heat means that you can uh, process entropy for less work. It was, it was really looking forward to being like super fast and super I'll go with intelligent, super intelligent at the end of the end of the universe and now he's stuck with a bill and it's just it's crazy. He thought he thought his entire life was going to be underway. Unfortunately his direct descendants died out a few generations ago so he has no one to directly turn to which is a little bit of a shame. To be honest uh, one of my solutions for uh, actually I think one of the requirements for people just uploading themselves to a computer should be that they don't have any descendants. You think? You think that's yes. a... Yes. 
I think because then it will stop the growth of the same genome. Mm. You just you either want to live forever, or you want to live forever for your children. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, genomes come into it when you are se- yeah, if you're separating yourself from from your physical self. Because when you upload, barring some way that programs start to have children, is kind of what I'm going well, I for. I wouldn't allow that. <laughs> you wouldn't allow that. Oh man! But did did you not watch Matrix Revolutions? A classic, classic old film. Um, where where two two robots loved each other very much, and that they they had a daughter program, but where they came from, you were only allowed to exist if you had a purpose, and they didn't like that, so they were trying to break her free. Um, it, the most touching of story arcs in in the whole Matrix universe. Problem is, you're always gonna either run out of processing power or space for the processing power. Yes, yeah, this is this is true. I like. Are we seeing a vision of the future where the universe is actually nothing but one giant... I'm going to say computer, for lack of a better word, where where we're just keeping everybody's consciousness running for as long as we can keep entropy going? And then you need to ask, is this just a simulation as well, then? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm fairly sure that almost everything we ever do is just simulation. Looks at invisible yeah. camera. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Nothing. Sorry. We still need more power here. Um, I'm going to take it this way because this is where the closest power appears to lie. I would have used the big electric poles, but okay. Nah, I can fit more lights in with the short ones. <laughs> of course. We are creating turrets. That is turrets. All right. Uh, the next thing we need to do, of course, would be grenades, which is going to be interesting because we need to try and fetch in some coal from somewhere. Which we didn't put on the bus. In fact, coal is all the way down the bottom end here. We you can mine it. It's right next to us. There. Is it literally? Ah, ah. This, this is one thing that I always neglect when gathering resources. The fact that I don't have to go back to the place I know where they are, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, could, I could strike out on my own and find a new place. I Man, oh, it is literally right here. Yes. With the oil so. that we've been avoiding. All right. Well, ne- next, next, next job for today is indeed the grenades. Let's have a look for the grenades for the people listening to the the report. Ten coal, five iron plates, eight seconds. Is iron plates? Awesome, awesome. Where are we going to br- uh, bring the coal from over this way? I happen to have oh only one electric mining drill on me. Where do we build the electric mining drills? If we haven't. We are bad Factorio players. I would either make the process of basically just simulating life much small, or slower. Yep. I would launch a probe server near a black hole. Mmm, yes. Basically on the horizon, it can survive the tidal forces. Yeah, get as close uh, as you can. Yeah. Remove the access to the real world because. You died. It's it's over. I mean, I mean to but... be fair, they would probably want to keep a distance anyway. Like you would get a small small sub community that are very interested in what's going on in the real. But I should imagine the vast majority of them are like, no, we're we're moving on to to bigger and better things. We don't need to, we don't need your suffering because <laughs> because that's all the, real life is really. <laughs> the question is yes. At one point. Do you stop communicating with them inside? So do you... I mean, removing the access to the real world is also not allowing them to communicate with anyone, right? Yeah, I, so I have a feeling that humans being humans, inside the server, they would end up being a council that liaise with the world outside. And, and by liaise, I mean talk to the mechanics. Um, <laughs> Because someone someone would have to let them know if things were going a little weird. Automated systems in place just reporting their duties. I mean, your uh, today's PC if it crashes, Windows detects. Windows, Linux, Mac, OS. Yeah, detects, it does detect uh, a problem. Not the not the individual problem. Uh, the program. The program just stops working for some reason. It doesn't know why. I'm just fearing one fact that. 
Yeah. Even even if they're running at slower intervals and all of that, and they're near a black hole, they can survive it to inter in basically infinity. Yeah. At what point? At what point will they start referring to the real world as the afterlife? Uh, ooh, ah, uh, no, nah, I, I think it'll be totally the other way around. Um, I think people will believe themselves to be in paradise, um, and they'll talk about this horrific thing that they had to go through to get here. But then again, a simulation can simulate so many things. Is it a constantly evolving simulation where they can express their art and have all of the possibilities are open to them, or does it have limits? You would imagine they would have all the possibilities open to them. Uh, you would imagine that at least a few of them would have the programming and artistic skills to make the universe that people want to live in. And I've got a feeling that would be one of the ways that uploads <laughs> would make money, is by creating places for the richer uploads to inhabit. Mm, yes, yes. As, as well as chopping up your subroutines for use. You could uh, <laughs> you could sell stuff second. There used there used to be this place called Second Life. Uh, it, it's very well documented in the uh, in the records about how people uh, would would almost give up the real world to to go and uh, play. It wasn't it wasn't really a game. It was a social experience. Yes. But it would be the same sort of thing where in in that place that people were making new clothes and. Uh, you know, new scriptable objects for the inhabitants to enjoy and I've got a feeling the same thing would happen in the afterlife yeah but I'm saying that there must be a time there must be a point in time where the only thing keeping you uh, you mentioned that game but they're still grounded in reality yes they're not completely cut off so we have a problem where they're completely cut off they just might forget Hmm. Yeah, some of the some of them probably would forget and and just think that this paradise that they inhabit. Because as as the whole point of this conversation should have been getting at the amount of time that you are in the simulation, uh, sorry, the amount of time you're in the real world is nothing compared to the amount of time you're in the civilization uh, in the simulation. Sim simulation. Wow, simulation. I, I could. Simulation might be a thing. It's the civilization of the simulants. We should have probably. Brought this up, I guess. Well, we could do this. Here we go. Uh, no, I let's will. Here. Are you sure? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, basically continue to here and then put the science machine here. Nice. Uh, I guess that that could be an option to look like that. We are finally producing gray science. Way. At an alar alarmingly slow rate. <laughs> yeah, really slow. It's the uh, the coal production, cool. but that's all right. We can we can scale up the coal production any time. Uh, but I think with that, I am going to say. <laughs> Wait, no. Let's try that again. That was the wrong outro. Captain's log <laughs> signing off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm even tempted to leave it as that. But yes, with the expansion of the coal, the uh, moving of the grey sites, which I might actually quickly just throw in an actual moving belt. We we will, of course, be being much more thoughtful about this. Uh, we have done great things today. Talked about the morals of uh, uploading, as, you know, is our want. And with that, Captain's Log, signing off. <laughs>